Okay, so what we have here, we have, we're going to call this one our off-grid inverter, and we're going to call this one our on-grid inverter. And I'm going to explain the differences in them, and how they work, and they're actually two very different beasts. So, what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually just going to flick the house back to the grid, so I can turn this one off and take the cover off, so it's nice and safe, so I do actually stick my fingers in there. I'm not going to electrocute myself, so. There we go, back over to the grid. Okay, so, um, this is your typical on-grid inverter. Now, how they work, this is a 2.8 kilowatt on-grid inverter. So, what a 2.8 kilowatt on-grid inverter, or a 5 kilowatt inverter, or a 1 kilowatt inverter grid type, what that actually means is how many solar panels you can actually feed into your inverter. So, I'll take this cover off. So, on these inverters here, this one here is actually got two connections at the bottom, so basically you can run two different panels and have them face two different displays of arrays. So you could maybe have one set of panels facing that way and one set of panels facing that way um, and plug into this inverter. So when, you, when you're talking grid tied inverters, yeah, it's how many panels you can actually stick into the inverter. Where an off-grid inverter is basically how much power that inverter can create at any one time. So Let's stick with the on-grid inverter and how they work. So these is actually they parallel with the grid. So pretty much your 240 from your house comes into here, um, or from the grid, and your DC from your solar panels come in here. And all within inside this inverter, what happens is if it's producing enough energy, it takes the DC from your solar panels and turns it into AC. If it's creating more energy than you're using in your house, it'll actually use the energy from this first before it takes anything from the grid. If there's any excess energy left, it'll feed it back to the grid. Now, the downside with the grid feed inverter, in reality, is if your neighbor's not home to use their energy straight away, it pretty much is lost in heat and wasted, and no one really gets any benefit of it. So, um, yeah, the, the, unless you're gonna store the energy into batteries, it's actually a waste of time, or waste of energy feeding it back to the grid for anyone. So, no one really gets any advantage of it, unless it's used um, quite quickly. Uh, otherwise, it's just lost in heat. So, the reason they actually only work when the power's on with the grid is for a safety reason. As if this was feeding energy back to the grid, and you know the electricians were working on the line, uh, they could get electrocuted and lose their lives. And you know none of us would want our partner or someone from our family basically working on that. So, for a safety issue, these grid grid feed inverters don't work when they don't have power from the grid. It allows the technicians working on the grid to have more control to flick it off, safely work on the lines, and fix things up as they require to get fixed up. So, cool. The biggest thing that goes wrong with these inverters is these resistors in here. Um, they actually just dry up. So, over the time of energy and heat, um, they lose their moisture, and basically they won't conduct energy anymore, and therefore you're required to replace your inverter. So, um, this one here actually still works. I picked it up from a guy um, who they actually were replacing all these inverters because a lot of them were failing, so they were just, before the warranties run out, running around and replacing everyone's inverters. So, um, but that's the main problem with these grid tight inverters, is that these resistors dry up, and they stop working, they can't conduct electricity anymore. So, Okay, so we're going to flick out our um, inverter here. So we flicked it off, now the inverter's off. What I can also do as well with this inverter, is I can actually flick off the um, uh, cables to the battery from the other side. I'll just leave those because they're only 12 volts, so it's low voltage, okay. Not gonna kill me. Okay, so basically inside these inverters, um, this pro cable here in the sheaths had a hard time from getting swapped from one inverter to another and shoved through walls plenty of times. Um, every inverter I've tested here, they all have things mounted in different spots, so I require to move the cables and anyway. Um, what basically happens is the DC, comes from the other side, so we've got our, our batteries on the other side over there. They run through a fuse and a circuit breaker, and they come over this side here, and they put the, the DC into the inverter, and the inverter turns that DC into 240 volt, which runs out there over into the, over into the house. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Um, inside these inverters, they have a thing called a toroidal transformer which I'm actually going to show in another video when we open up the 48 volt inverter. Um, and what an off-grid inverter does, so a 3 kilowatt off-grid inverter 
is actually how much energy you can create at any one time and use. So let's take for example, you know, we, we, we talked about in when saving energy of devices that use energy. Let's say we've got a three kilowatt inverter, we have kettle, we said use, so let's round it up to two kilowatts. We can flick the kettle on, that'll take 2000 watts of power from this. Say we've got the lights running, we've got another 100 watts there. Now if we wanted to flick the toaster on, which was like a 1500 watt device, what would happen is this off-grid inverter, it would be able to create enough energy, it would double for about three seconds, it would create 6,000 watts, but only for three seconds, and then what would happen if that load continued? If we had the toaster, kettle, and the lights on, so we're over capacity going over the three kilowatts, what would happen, the overload light would flick on, and then the inverter would have shut down and it can't actually produce any more power. Okay, so that's one of the biggest differences between an off-grid inverter and an on-grid inverter is an on-grid inverter, the, the kilowatt hours, or the kilowatts they talk about, so you've got a three kilowatt system, is how many panels you can actually feed into your inverter. Where with an off-grid inverter, it's all about how much energy you can create and use at any one time. So, um, for us, we actually have two of these installed here. Um, we went with two three kilowatt inverters, and the reason we went with three two three kilowatt inverters, I said it the wrong way around then, I said we had three two kilowatt inverters, but no, we've actually chosen, you could do that, you could install three two kilowatt inverters. We installed two three kilowatt inverters. So what basically happens is when we have them both installed here, is they'll work together and they'll talk to each other. So three and three equals six, so that would allow us to run a house at 6,000 watts. The reason we split up, we could have went and brought a six kilowatt inverter, but being off grid, we've decided, well, planning on going off grid eventually, we decided if we run two inverters, if one fails, we've always got a second one as a backup. If we only had one six kilowatt inverter and something went wrong, then we've completely gone, we've got no energy, we're either starting a generator or a backup source or whatever until we sort out our inverter. By having the two and separating, what that allows us to do, if something does go wrong, it just means we can't run the dishwasher, washing machine, kettle all at one time. So, um, basically means that, yeah, we can, you know, when we have a failure with one, basically which means, you know, we, we're required to be a little bit smarter with our energy consumption and um, watch the energy meter a little bit more, make sure we don't go over those 3,000 watts and use more than that, otherwise the inverter will go into overload and shut down. So, so that's the basic understanding. And let's go over now, I'm gonna show you um, a different type of inverter. Um, when you go look at the 48 volt inverter, um, that's actually a go-through. So we talk about here my, my grid switch here, um, which allows us to go off-grid grid. This other inverter actually has it inside. I'm going to show you how that works. So let's go have a look at those two inverters now.